subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. iPad Pro 10.5 versus the new iPad from 2018 comparison video. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because some people are actually probably thinking about, should I get that 10.5 or should I just go with the cheaper, you know, 2018 model that just came out with Apple Pencil support, bringing it more in line with the iPad 10.5 because it does do some pro features now. And that's why we're creating this video here. Let's begin with the first category that I want to talk about, and that is the design of the two. So one of the most noticeable differences is that the iPad Pro 10.5 is going to be a little bit taller, wider, but it's thinner and lighter. So it has a nice balance to it that I really do like, and uh, it has a better canvas for doing drawings and illustrations because it's wider. So it's a better pro tablet for, you know, doing, you know, your illustrations, drawing and using the Apple Pencil. This is definitely the better tablet here, not because of the latency. Both have a very similar latency on how the pencil actually feels on the display, but it just has more canvas to draw on. And that is huge if you are into design work and stuff like that. Now, being a little bit lighter, but only slightly lighter and thinner gives this tablet just a more premium feel overall when it comes to its design and it should be I mean considering that it is a lot more money than this one it should be that now the iPad from 2018 is relatively thick in comparison to most of the pro lines I think even the 9.7 from 2018 was thinner than this tablet and uh, it has kind of this hollower display that has non lamination like this one here that you can see this like black bars around it it's just got a little bit of a hollow feel to it on the display. The rear panel or the rear casing though is very premium as we would expect the aluminum from Apple. This feels very similar, but that camera without having a flash, it just doesn't look premium to me, but that's just me. You still have a headphone jack up at the top. And overall, this is just a classic iPad design. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's the same iPad looking experience we've seen for years now, ever since the inception of the original iPad Air. So this design is nothing extraordinary or anything like that. It's just a classic iPad design that now supports the Apple Pencil. Being that it is a little bit heavier than the 10.5, that gives it a feeling of just being like a little bit of a a chubbier little tablet than the more sleek slender but a little bit wider and taller iPad Pro so from a pure design standpoint it's an easy win to the iPad Pro it's got thinner side bezels as well so you feel more immersed in the application that you are working in on this tablet right here now speaking a little bit about their build quality they do both have a very similar build but I feel like Apple paid a little bit more attention to detail on the iPad Pro 10.5 you can see it has precision drilled speakers on the top and the bottom also it's just i don't know like it just has this feeling that you know it was just more thought out when they made it that's probably due to the fact that it has that laminated display you know everything just looks perfectly made here on the 10.5 and that's something that i could really appreciate whereas i feel like a little bit like on the ipad 2018 that they kind of just threw in some old components and updated the internals like the processor and things like that the ios software but it just feels like an old recycled product from years ago that they just took their recycled products and made a new one out of it and put in internals upgrades like the a10 fusion for example but overall both are still stellar i'm not comparing these to no amazon kindle tablets or anything like that they're both still amazing but we're talking side by side if we're talking this one to this one there's no comparison really there was just a lot more attention to detail you know paid attention when it comes to the build quality on the 10.5 let's talk about the displays now so here is a huge difference for both of these now first up the ipad pro 10.5 and this guy get similarly bright but at the same time this one has the true tone display which adjusts to the ambient lighting conditions most of the time it just makes your display more warm and it's not the same as night shift as a lot of people might think true tone actually adjusts automatically on the fly to make it easier on your eyes night shift just kind of lowers the blue light on a display so you don't you can go to sleep easier at night and you're not you know glued to your product staying up till three o'clock in the morning now this display is also 120 hertz which you can tweak down to the 60 hertz if you want it in accessibility settings but it's really hard to show this on camera but it's a much smoother looking display to the eye over time after using this i found that you kind of forget about that so it's not the biggest deal in the world but if you really do want a 120 hertz display it's going to look smoother when you're drawing and it's going to look smoother when you're watching some videos and it's going to look smoother when you're scrolling so it's definitely a better display here now also one last thing i do want to mention is that it's only one ppi 
bigger than this one. So in terms of sharpness, no difference there. And again, we'll mention one more time, lamination. It's laminated to the front glass. So that means that the display is closer to you than this one. You can kind of see how this display sits a little bit behind the glass in the 2018 version. Now in this version, you do have that LCD display. And by the way, both of these look great. They're 264 pixels per inch here on this guy. And um, it looks very sharp as well. I mean, I don't really notice too much of a difference in sharpness, but I find the iPad Pro 10.5 is a little bit warmer than this display. This display still is plenty sharp and it's very enjoyable to look at. It will smoke most Chromebooks that are under $300. So retina display here, very good stuff. It just doesn't have true tone on this display. So it's kind of like what you got on the older iPhone 6S and 6 series devices. And both of them are a four by three aspect ratio. That means that you will have letterboxing when you are watching videos in YouTube. So let's talk about the processors, storage, and software. So both of them do rock the latest iOS version. Let's get that out of the gate. This does give you the A10X CPU. And all that really means is that you have a little bit more power to do some multitasking. Maybe you're doing some GarageBand, you're doing some iMovie, you're doing some heavier things. This just has a little bit more oomph than this one over here. What that means is just a little bit more power than the 2018 device here on this iPad. So it's just more power here and storage capacities on every level is higher for the Pro 64 to start which is the one I have here. You can go up to 256 gig or you can go up to a whopping 512 gig. So the iPad Pro brings the storage and the performance if you want it. Now over here on the iPad 2018, you start at 32, which I think is annoying because they could have just went 64 or 128. 32 will run out quickly. So I do recommend if you're gonna be keeping this for the long haul and you know you're gonna be doing work on the iPad 2018 and you're not just gonna be doing you know, media tablet or just passing it around the house just to watch some Netflix, then don't go with the 32 gig. You're gonna run out of space pretty quickly. Now this one has the A10 Fusion chipset. That is actually the same processor that is found in the iPhone 7 Plus or in the iPhone 7. And those processors are fantastic. They're still very fast. So the Fusion is no problem. It doesn't Geekbench as high as this one or the A11 CPU, but it's got plenty enough power that's gonna last for a couple years to come easily. So how does that translate to real world performance between a 10.5 and the iPad 2018? The only thing that you're really gonna see too much of is a difference in the actual, you know, 120 hertz display. That's where you really see a difference on these two. Now, in terms of load speeds, they're gonna be very similar because they're both A10 architecture, so they're gonna be a very similar processor. So, you know, even the iPad 2018 is gonna be able to handle heavy stuff. I think that the iPad Pro 10.5 will just be able to go just a little bit more, but not too much more when it comes to its power. And I don't think most people are gonna be utilizing that A10X Fusion chip as much power as it has because you are running iOS on here and most iOS apps are very well optimized and will run even on lower end processors. So performance is not gonna be felt too much different on either one you go with here. Now an area where the 10.5 really just crushes the iPad 2018 is the camera. So this camera right here, while it is a single lens, you don't get no portrait mode, this is the same lens you had on the iPhone 7. And while that's not a pro camera, it's still a good camera for a tablet, like a really good one. Because if we go here into camera, you can see, I wish Apple would put this in their camera UI, record video, you can do up to 4K video recording on this tablet. So theoretically, you could have this thing on a tripod, you can get a tripod adapter, you could record your videos, edit everything right on this iPad, it would do it all. It's got a headphone jack for you to plug in a microphone external so you could like literally shoot your video on this thing on a tripod and you know edit it right here on the iPad uploads. You could do everything right on this thing with this 4K video. You have recording slow-mo up to 1080p at 120 frames per second and the new codec is supported for you know reducing file size for your photos. So over here, this camera is just much better than the one you're gonna find over on the 2018 model. So overall, this camera on here is very similar to the one you're gonna find on the iPhone 7, and you could definitely see the differences if you do compare these photos side by side. The one on the iPad Pro 10.5 looks very good for a tablet. I mean, look at the detail in the flowers there. Now, you're gonna see a lot more noise if you are doing photography over here on the 2018 iPad. Now, personally, I don't really ever use my camera on an iPad that much, but I do like the fact that if I just wanna take my iPad Pro, I could potentially get some good photos. Now. Granted, I'm not gonna say that you're gonna get nasty photos on here. You still have an eight megapixel camera. Apple's not gonna put in a horrible camera, 
but it's nowhere near the quality of the 10.5. And definitely one I would definitely say don't use this over your smartphone camera. Whereas on this tablet, you could say, well, you could use that or your smartphone camera because this thing can stand toe to toe basically with the best smartphone cameras on the market. Another area where it's an easy win for the iPad Pro 10.5 is going to be the audio because you do have four speakers here on this one versus two. So one, two, and then at the bottom, one, two, that gives you four speakers. And this thing booms on the iPad 10.5. Speaker is very loud. Over here on this one, while it's not, it does have stereo speakers, you see one, two, it is not the loudest and it only fires out of one side. Now, neither of these have horrible speakers. They're both very loud. Even the 2018 is pretty loud for a tablet, louder than some older iPads. It's still nowhere near this guy. So if you want the true audio experience, go with the 10.5 you're going to appreciate this one a lot more some of the things that are the same here is they both have the same bluetooth 4.2 so bluetooth connection speeds will be very similar on either this one actually has a larger battery capacity than the 10.5 and that's felt i find the battery life to be better over here on the 10.5 that went upside down this one has better battery life than the 10.5 it'll just last longer no matter what you're doing and you kind of trade that sometimes you trade power for battery life on the 10.5. You have more color options on the 10.5. You get rose gold versus just three colors here for the 2018. That's not a big deal unless you really want that rose gold color. They both have the same codec support. So, you know, files and things like that should all be very similar. And using either of these with the Apple Pencil feels fantastic. I feel like because that displays hollow, you just hear a little bit more you hear a little bit more of that when you're using this iPad. But other than that, it's still a great pencil experience on this guy as well. Except for the fact that you still have to plug this thing in at the bottom, which just looks kind of awkward still. Okay, so I did a little pricing breakdown to show you what it really costs. You can go ahead and pause and read it here, but I'm going to go through it here with you. 2018 iPad for education buyer's discount. So with no accessories, the education base model is $309 plus tax. So you're looking at right under $400, depending on, you know, if you get a case with this, some accessories, you know, like a screen protector, it's going to run you around 400 bucks. Now, iPad education, 128 gig, just the iPad alone, it's going to be $409 plus tax, get some accessories, you're around $500 plus tax. Logitech accessories, EDU base plus Logitech crayon, keyboard you're around 525 bucks if you get just the edu base with the discount you get the logitech crayon and a keyboard you're looking to write around 525 bucks now the 128 gig pushes you to write around 625 bucks now if you just get this ipad with a pencil like i have right here you're looking anywhere from 400 and 450 bucks now if you want to go to 128 gig version with just the pencil you're looking at around 550 bucks lastly do you want the apple pencil the ipad and the keyboard you are looking at over 500 dollars for the base model and you're looking at over 600 dollars for the 128 gigabyte model now, what does this all mean? Because you might be saying, well, that's a far cry away from, you know, the starting price. Well, you got to consider taxes, accessories, and the cost of the pencil and a keyboard. But if you consider all of this together, any configuration you do get, even if you get all the accessories, still less than the iPad Pro 10.5, which starts at 649 bucks. Now, configure the iPad Pro 10.5 in the same exact configuration with everything included, you're pushing right around 950 to 1,000 bucks. So this is significantly cheaper than an iPad Pro similarly configured. In fact, this is probably about 40 to 50% cheaper. So we talked about everything in this video from displays, build quality, you know, pricing, everything. And we discovered how much cheaper the iPad 2018 really is considering even if you get all the accessories, it's still less than the starting price point of the iPad 10.5 Pro. And with that being said, you have to decide to yourself, are you really going to utilize the features that the iPad Pro offers? Now, personally, I think that, you know, you, you get the iPad Pro, if you don't actually use what it offers, you're going to feel like I didn't get the value out of this tablet. But if you buy this one, you kind of don't lose no matter what, because you're already 50% less than a Pro. So you don't lose with this tablet, whether you get a pencil or not, it'll just be cheaper for you. It will, it will do great as a regular tablet, and I think you'll be happy with what you're paying for it. A lot of people will argue that you can get a Chromebook that's cheaper than this and, you know, boring iPad again, but here, here's the deal. A Chromebook at this price point usually doesn't give you 
a beautiful display like retina it will give you sometimes a 1080p display but it doesn't give you that really sharp density and that really good accuracy that you get on an ipad so that's one thing i would argue but anyway personally i think that the ipad 2018 is a great value and it's definitely a better value than the pro 10.5 but the Pro 10.5, if you are going to use the features, is the choice. So I would pick this one if you think you're going to utilize, you know, having a better display. You're going to utilize having, you know, more power under the hood. And you're really going to be drawing or illustrating a lot. You're going to like this tablet more. Anyway, that's my final thoughts here. What are your thoughts on the iPad Pro 10.5 versus the iPad 2018? Drop them down below in the comment section of this video. If you found this helpful, enjoyable, do me a favor, click that like button.